the CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. Something for nothing has been the quest of the light-fingered, the swindlers, those too lazy to work honestly, and the men whose story you're about to hear. It has been said there is a thief in every one of us, but somehow most of us manage to keep him locked up. But sometimes temptation gets the upper hand. Phil! Phil, what are you doing? I'm pulling back the safety catch of this pistol. Then I'm going to fire it at you. And then wipe away my fingerprints and place the gun in your right hand. But why? Why? Well, what did I do? I can't trust you anymore, partner. Therefore, our partnership is hereby dissolved. <laughs> mystery drama, The 500 Carats, based on a tale by George Griffith, was especially adapted for the mystery theater by G. Frederick Lewis, and stars Gordon Gould. doesn't have to say the word Kimberly twice to know it means diamonds. And one of the most famous in South Africa was the Conception Diamond, because Conception Bay is where it was found and lost, all 500 carats of it. The last man to see it was Philip Marsden. That gentleman at this moment sits behind bars in the Johannesburg jail with another gentleman, Inspector Grace. The reason I asked you to come to my cell, Inspector, is to try to make you believe I do not have the Conception Diamond. Nor do I know where it is. The only time I had possession of the stone was inside the company offices. It was locked in the firm's safe. And for you to have held me on such meager evidence as you have is illegal. Unfortunately for you, Marsden... The law decides its own legality. You had access to the diamond, and although we don't know how, you could have spirited it out of the building. Inspector, you don't understand me at all. This has been going on too long. I've been searched and followed and kept at bay for weeks. I'm at the end of what I can stand and retain my sanity. I sent for you to tell you what I know in exchange for my freedom so that I can leave South Africa forever. And if you tell me everything, we might strike a bargain. I'll trust you. What do I have to lose? The truth is the truth. Two months ago, there was an incredible find at the Conception Mine. I was with the director when it was brought in. Sir Hugh, this stone was delivered by hand. Oh, something extraordinary, eh? Well, bring it here, Delbert. Good Lord. Marston, come and have a look at this. Why, it's certainly a remarkable stone. Has it been weighed? Oh, not yet, Mr. Marston. Mm, magnificent. Yes, on the face of it, I'd say a perfect octahedron. Where was it found, Darwin? Oh, at the 800-foot level at Conception. Well, I think the managing director should see this. The other chap's upstairs before we lock it up. Shall I give the managing director a call? No, I will. Uh, Marston, you take it up to the diamond room and have it weighed. Uh, uh, by the way, take Derwent along with you. Uh, I, I, I've been very pleased with your work for the firm, Derwent. Uh, I think we'll make you Mr. Marston's assistant. Uh, what do you say, Marston? He's a good man. Welcome aboard, Derwent. Oh, thank you, sir. I'll show you the way up. 
Uh, give me a buzz when you get the exact weight, will you? Uh, I'll call insurance and come up for another look. When we get to the top of these circular metal stairs... <laughs> it's like climbing up a lighthouse. <laughs> I've never been up here before. Now turn right, and there'll be a door with a safety grill. Press the button. And we wait for someone to open the Judas window. Oh. <laughs> The what? <laughs> that little closed window in the door. That's what they call it. Hello. Oh, it's you, Marston. Come in. And Derwent. And something else, which should knock your eye out. Gentlemen, gather round the scales, and we'll weigh the stone. 400, 420, 450, 500... A little more. Five hundred five. Five hundred five carats. That's as large as since the junker in the Jubilee. <laughs> Wait till I tell the old man. Get me Sir Hugh, will you? Uh, Marsden, I've been waiting for your call. Sir Hugh, five hundred five carats. <sighs> Lock it up. I'll call Cape Town and tell them we're sending it down. I, I say, Marston, was the managing director pleased? Well, he didn't get up here, sir. Oh. Well, I'll have the safe unlocked and show it to him later. Then, Inspector, on Saturday, it was decided not to send the diamond down to Cape Town. I'd had word there was some sort of strike going on and warned the managing director we'd better hold on to the stone for the present... Monday, when the safe was opened, the diamond was gone. Get me Sir Hugh on the line, please. Sir Hugh here? Glad you're in, sir. Um, Marston? I'm in the diamond room. We just opened the safe, and the stone's gone. What? Is it the big one? The conception? Yeah, we, we've turned the safe inside out. Does the managing director know? I called you first. Well, but I'll, I'll find him and bring him up with me. If he hasn't already left the country, I'll, I'll put in a call for Inspector Grace. Oh, Sir Hugh's calling Inspector Grace. Grace? I thought he'd retired. It was only you and I and the managing director here on Saturday. Let's try to reconstruct what we remember so we have all the facts straight for him. Well, we ought to tell him who else saw the stern. Sir Hugh on Wednesday and Thursday. Now, that's the day he brought the managing director with him. It was after six when I closed the safe. Well, Sir Hugh brought his sister on Friday, or... Or was it Thursday? I wasn't here then. Sir Hugh must have locked up because he opened the safe again with me Saturday morning when they took the insurance photograph. I think I was the last one to see it on Saturday. Well, I was with you and the managing director. I don't know what questions the inspector will have... But I certainly hope he can come up with some answers. Gentlemen, this is Inspector Grace. I have persuaded him as a personal favor to delay his retirement from the police force. Uh, the Bureau. Uh, the Police Bureau to take up this case. Uh, he has a few questions for you. Oh, thank you. Sir Hugh... Is there anyone in this room who should be excluded from suspicion? Anyone? <laughs> Including myself? Why not? Inspector, um, I was actually the last one to see that diamond on Saturday. I placed it in its leather bag in the presence of the managing director and Mr. Derwent here. Uh, just the three of you? No one else was in this room. Uh, Sir Hugh... Where is the managing director? I, I called his house. His wife said he was out hunting. I'll have the Bureau examine the safe. But to the casual eye, I'd say it hasn't been tampered with. Well, it couldn't have been unlocked after it was closed on Saturday. I thought Mr. Marsden had a key. I do, but I can't use my key to open the safe unless Sir Hugh or the managing director are here. They each have a master key without which the day key, which I have, is of no use. You're absolutely convinced you saw the diamond yourself when you locked up Saturday? Oh, without question. Mr. Marsden's been with the firm 20 years. Many diamonds have passed through his hands, and we've never experienced a loss. It's not a bad record. Well, I'd say a tribute to our choice of men. 
I will conduct an official search. I dislike saying this, but everyone on the premises is under suspicion. And Sir Hugh, if you would be so good as to put me in touch with your managing director when he returns from his hunting trip, I'd be obliged. Well, the managing director is also suspect. These specifications indicate the diamond was worth three million pounds, uncut. <laughs> Why should I not suspect the managing director? You also, Sir Hugh. Well, <laughs> I suppose that's only fair. Mm. Well, let me see. How large would you say this room is? Oh, 30 by 30. The entrance there. The safe here. And tables in the center. Scales and so on. Windows. What street do we face? Stockdale Street. Oh, yes. Tell me again. What transpired last Saturday? Uh, I, 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 I already know you told me. Please, tell me again. Uh, I was the last to see the diamond. The managing director said, lock up, and he and I opened the safe. Mr. Derwent put in the tray. The new big stone was in a fitted leather bag on a tray with some other fine stones. I placed the tray in the safe and stepped back. After that, I closed the door... Gave the knob a twirl, and that was it. So you, is it against the regulations if I smoke? Oh, no, 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 not at all. Yeah, but I'll match. Uh, Mars, and light the inspector's cigar for him, will you? <coughs> Excuse me, inspector. Yes, that <coughs> does make it a bit steamy. Mind if I uh, open a window? Hmm. Well, we will lock this room... What about these three windows? Can they be locked? They're left open only in the warmest weather. Mm, such as we've been having this month. Uh, yes. But there are guards everywhere. No chance of anyone throwing a stone into the street from here? Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. To get back to Saturday, Mr. Marsden, you were saying you closed the safe, and uh, then what happened? Well, I went down to Sir Hugh's office, and we talked. What did we talk about? Oh, well, uh, not being able to get together for a hunt on Sunday. We postponed it a week. That's right. And then? Well, then I went home. Oh, so did I. Were you searched as you left the building? Oh, of course. Our security, you know. Everyone is searched. No exceptions. And what about the managing director? I don't know. He left the diamond room in front of me. I suppose he went home, too. It was after six. And you, Mr. Derwent? Oh, oh, where did he go? He'll be back. He just stepped out. Uh, Derwent was on duty Saturday night. He remained here in the diamond room? Until seven in the morning, when he's due to go off duty. By the way, Mr. Marsden, what was the reason you and Sir Hugh didn't go on a hunt on Sunday? Well, I couldn't make it. My wife had other plans. And, uh, where do you generally go? Well, it depends on what you're after. The buck are fairly plentiful on the range between here and Barclay West. I generally go there. So you hunted there alone on Sunday? I did, as a matter of fact. But no luck. None at all. Oh, I saw a white hippo. Did you now? You never told me. So you... I'll assign my men to various parts of your firm, and uh, that's it for now. Are they going to do a thorough search? That stone could be in the building. Uh, I wouldn't count on it. Why not? And then sneak it out sometime in the future. And the diamond at this very moment is probably miles away. What makes you say that? Because I believe it has taken flight. As assuredly as if it had wings. That is the most amazing piece of instant deduction I've ever run across. And I've hidden nothing from you. Related the exact conversations as they happened. All that remained secret, of course, was the inner workings of two minds. The person who engineered the theft and the inspector who was deducing the modus operandi. I shall be back shortly with Act Two.
Unquestionably, the most valuable treasure per square centimeter is that piece of crystallized carbon we call a diamond. It's easily hidden and easily disposed of. There are diamond cutters in Amsterdam, Rio, and London who ask no questions and turn a rough diamond into untraceable cut gems. This is what prompts Inspector Grace to apply all heat and speed to solving the theft. In the Johannesburg jail, he sits with the accused thief, Philip Marsden. You have me, Inspector, but you don't have the diamond. Not yet. I sent for you to see me in my cell because I don't think I can go on much longer like this without losing my mind. Confession is good for the soul, Marsden. Before I go on, will you tell me how you were able to guess the manner the diamond left consolidated? I'll be glad to. I followed the old adage, where there's smoke, there's fire. Smoke? Fire? Smoke rings, to be more precise. Uh, here we are at Consolidated Inspector. Nothing like a brisk walk to start off the morning. And it's given us a chance to discuss your progress. Yeah, such as it is, or rather isn't. Uh, would you like a cigar? Uh, no, no thanks. Well, any more on your theory of the flying diamond? Ah, I see you're again without a match. Well, this time I'm equipped. Here, let me... Thank you. Helps me think. Yeah. Well, I had to give it up. Ah, but I love the smell of a good cigar. Yeah. I say, you're very good at that. I was never able to blow smoke rings that perfect. You just lean your head back, pucker your lips, and blow. Yeah. Look, that, that ring keeps its shape a long time, doesn't it? Well, it's practically up to our second story. Yes, notice where it's going now. Caught in some current of air... And drifting across the street, out toward the hills. Ah, I love those hills and the veldt beyond. We're really a pretty country in South Africa. Marston and I find the best game right out there. As yes, if you've been riding with him lately. No, no, I haven't. We used to at least three times a month. In the past week or so, he's taken to going out alone. How long has he been with the firm, did you say? Oh, 20 years in August. Oh, we'll have to celebrate somehow. He's an extremely valuable employee. Marsden, when I saw that smoke ring blowing in the direction of the hills and thought back to the day I stood by the window in the diamond room smoking... <laughs> That smoke ring did exactly the same thing. Rising, then suddenly get caught in a current, and then I knew how you accomplished the theft. I suppose I say, as far as you went, you guessed right. But you are still a considerable distance from a solution. No, not that far. A diamond may be heavier than air, but other things are lighter. At any rate... From that time on, I realized your little hunting expeditions were not after game, but the spot where the diamond had dropped. That evening, we covered all the roads. It's getting late, Inspector. Perhaps he isn't coming back to Kimberley by the old Transvaal Road. He'll have to take one of these roads. He knows we're watching his front door, so he can't stay out all night. Your men on the other roads, they won't go before you dismiss them. Hardly. They'll stay where they are, even if they have to wait all night. Huh. Ah, this may be our man, Constable. Hold your lantern high. Oh, stop right there. Whatever's the matter with you, Inspector Grace? Springing out of the man from the side of the road. Get off your horse, Marsden. What is all this? Well, Constable, take charge of the horse and tell the other men watching the other roads we have, Marsden. He'll ride back with me to the police station. This is very high-handed of you. Am I under arrest? Not yet. But I'm holding you on suspicion of theft. Theft of what? Can't a man go hunting anymore? <laughs> what were you hunting for? What are you going to do with me? A complete search. Of me? From top 
to tell. What do you expect to find? I believe that somehow you had that diamond flown out to the world, and for the past days, you've gone on to search for it. I plan to make certain you didn't find it today. Gentlemen, I've asked all the senior staff to join me here today. That is all but the managing director, who I understand has a touch of the flu. He's asked that we meet this morning, for he has something to tell us. Inspector Grace. Yes. Uh, last night we detained Mr. Philip Marsden of your staff and had him searched. Oh, we suspected he knew the whereabouts of the Conception Diamond and had gone out beyond the hills to recover it. But I was mistaken. Therefore, at Mr. Marsden's request, I am making public my apology. Oh, very sporting of you, Inspector. Marsden, I had no hand whatever in this matter, having left to the Inspector all responsibility. So far as I am concerned, and I speak for the Managing Director and the Board of Governors, we never thought you were in any way culpable. Ah, yes, I apologized to you that day at your office, but I still knew I was on the right track. I tagged Derwent as your accomplice. Somehow, the two of you have been able to transport that diamond a dozen or so miles from Kimberley, and it was there for the picking. I was sure you were just waiting for me to give up and stop watching you. Yes, but you wouldn't. Day after day, week after week, I could have killed you. That was our game. No matter how and when you went out into the hills, one of my men or I would be close by. I've never flown in one of these whirly birds before, Charlie. <laughs> it's quite enjoyable. It's a marvelous way to see the country. I've hired my helicopter out to catch poachers and rustlers, but never a diamond thief. Are we heading in the right direction? Yes. Yes, he always makes for the Barclay Hill section. How long have you been dogging him? Three months. Then it came to me in a flash. Charlie's got a helicopter. Rent it. The company's picking up the tab. Well, he shouldn't be too hard to spot from up here. Ha, ha, there he is. See him on that horse going through the ravine? Sure do. Now what? But can you just hover here and wait? Now he's stopped now, see? If you keep your bird in one place, I can focus these binoculars. I can get a little closer and then gain altitude. Uh, there he goes. Turning his horse around slowly. Ha, I think he's spotted the direction or something. He's heading for that flat part of the veil. What do we do? See, up ahead, that little flat basin. It's about a half a mile ahead of him. Can we land there? Land? But, but he's bound to see it. Oh, I want him to, if he hasn't already. How do you expect him to dig up that diamond if he knows he's being watched? He won't. That's the whole idea. And the next time he goes out, we'll be ready for him and take off and go through the same motions. Man, you're a pretty patient guy. Yes, I am. You're going to drive him crazy. Exactly what I have in mind. Let's land. Climb in, Inspector. Uh, hi, Charlie. Same man, same place today? Same place, Charlie, but a different man. Marsden's got a sidekick. He had to, to pull this off. Name's Derwent. Today it seems to be his turn. He started out on horseback half an hour ago. Oh, let's take off. Marsden has black hair, remember? Derwent's is red. Well... On a hot day like this, no one's going to be out on the veldt without a hat. Charlie, you're familiar with police procedure? Pretty much. There yeah, have been a lot of cases. Good. I'm deputizing you as an officer. I think Derwin may be a lot more nervy than Marsden. Is Marsden running scared? Close to it. His boss says he's very jittery. And I think that's why his pal is taking over. 
Pat, let's head for that same place we landed last time and walk back to Mr. Dower. You're sure that's him? Hey, just took off his hat to find himself. And that's all the identification I need. You're right. That is some red hair. He's coming, Charlie. I can hear him. You take over. Hello, Darwin. Nice day for a walk, isn't it? You two made a big mistake. Put your hands up. Pointing a gun at officers of the law is a bigger mistake, pal. Get out of here. Get away from me. We're just picnicking. What are you so excited about? Get going. You heard me. Be sensible. Throw the gun on the ground. You're on my land. I have every right to defend it. Now you get out of here. Do you hear that, Inspector? It's his land. You wouldn't happen to have a deed on you, would you? I didn't know it was your land. I just bought it. You you can see the stake marks. Oh, what do you want from me anyway? You know. Oh, I could kill you both. You're driving Phil Marston out of his head. Now you're pulling that stuff on me. I don't need this gun. You can have it. It's empty anyway. I, I wasn't threatening you with any harm. <sighs> Nice gun. Do you have a permit for it? Of course I have. May I see it, please? But I don't have it with me. I, I came out for a ride to look at my property. Who takes papers? But you took a pistol. Why are you picking on us? You, you arrested Philip Master. Now you're following me. What, what kind of justice is that? If we didn't know differently, we'd leave you alone. But you're a crook. And so is Marsden. All right, Inspector, he's all yours. You want to arrest him or let him go? I'll give him his gun back. He probably does have a permit. You're not fooling anyone, Derwent. We can wait just as long as you can. But I promise you this. If you live to be a thousand, neither of you will ever lay a hand on that diamond that's hidden out here. Never. Not without us watching. And you can tell Marston I said so. Derwent? Marston, you can come out of the woods. I've been out there for hours. There's been a policeman outside my house until just now, midnight. Every single day. I'm not that happy about meeting in a cemetery at night. But being followed and checked up on all the time. I left you the note to meet me here because we have to change our plans. Going out and looking is no good. We can't cover the area, and they won't let us alone. But they've got no proof. They don't need it. Someone else is bound to find it, Phil. It must still be tied to that red balloon. It's red. It's visible. How we have got to keep trying. There's no other way. Anyway, how are we going to change our plans? I don't know. Derwent, I'm beat. I'm at the end of my rope. I can't live with this anymore. I'm going to tell the inspector how we did it. You're telling him nothing. Uh, what are you pointing that gun at me for? It's not loaded, Phil. But this is to warn you, it will be. You'd kill me for that. Money? You're done right. Then don't kill me. The one we have to get out of the way is the inspector. If he's not around, we can move. Kill a police inspector? Oh, you're a lot crazier than I thought. Examine the motives of those who have sinned against society and those assigned to bring them to justice. Remember Javert, the relentless pursuer of Jean Valjean and Victor Hugo's classic? In the end of the novel, he breaks down... Here, I am an honest servant of the law, caught between two crimes. The crime of letting a man escape, and the crime of arresting him. Let's see how the inspector grapples with this problem when I return shortly with Act Three. It's not fanciful to say fighting a criminal is like fighting a war. You probe the defender's weaknesses, 
You attack him where he is the most vulnerable. You encourage him to make mistakes. And then, finally, you offer him peace on your terms. Only in this case, the thieves are a little more desperate, which makes the situation considerably more dangerous. We are back in the cemetery with Marsden and Derwent. What we have to consider is, is there a foolproof killing as there was a foolproof theft? I feel I've had a lot of experience with guns. Even before we start, we have to find a gun and ammunition which can't be traced. I don't have any connections like that. I do, but they're not here in South Africa. They're in England. Oh, it'll be months before anyone can get us a gun from England. There's got to be another source. Wait. Yes. I've got friends in Cape Town. If you can arrange it, say you're having me sent there on company business. Your friends have untraceable guns? To spare. Inspector, I, I'm in a quandary. You know that since your apology for having mistakenly arrested him, Marsden's credit with Consolidated has been fully restored. But I can see from day to day the man is ailing. He tells me he can no longer enjoy riding into the hills. His home is watched. His steps are followed. Your men are making his life miserable. Sir Hugh, do you want that diamond back or dead? Oh, what a question. Of course we do. I'll tell you he engineered that disappearance. Now, picture yourself. You're a man of good background, 20 good years with consolidated, living here in Kimberley on the average small salary. Well, we're not London, you know. And knowing that within a few miles, on a spot you alone might locate... There is a three million pound fortune. Yours for the picking up, if only you dare go and take it. <laughs> but you don't dare do so. So it's out there, is that it? That is it. Oh, dear. Dreadful situation. You're driving the man out of his mind. I'm driving a thief out of his mind. Uh, I wish he'd confess so I could put him out of his misery and go and retire as I planned to. You're dead certain about this? Yes. Would would you mind if I talk to him in front of you? What, right here in my office? Well, no, not at all. Then have him in. Uh, Helena, will you find me Philip Marsden, please, and send him up here? Uh, would you also send for that assistant of Marsden's, Derwent? Oh, he's not here. He went to Cape Town a week ago. Oh? On business? Well, I expect so. Marsden sent him. That's our shipping point. And to your knowledge, Derwent is not back yet. Well, I'm sure Marsden would have mentioned it. Uh, come in. You wanted to see me, Sir Hugh? Uh, actually, no. It's it's the inspector who does. What is it, Inspector? Haven't you had your pound of flesh from me yet? We were talking about Derwent. When will he be back? I don't expect him before next week. You're sure he hasn't returned to Kimberley? Quite sure. <laughs> That's really strange. Uh, Sir Hugh, the Bureau, at your expense, has hired a private helicopter. Yes, I remember. He flies within the 25-mile radius every day, sometimes with a police officer or myself. The day before yesterday, the pilot brought in a report that he spotted Mr. Derwent <laughs> way out on the veil. He was digging, it seems. It must have been someone else. He was mistaken. <laughs> That's what I told him. So yesterday he took a photographer with him, and they took pictures of anyone they saw. I had enlargements made, and I've brought them along. Uh, just to take them out of my briefcase. We'll spread them out on Sir Hugh's desk. Now, that figure with a spade in his hand. You see him looking up? He's uh, probably seen the helicopter. Sir Hugh, does that look like Derwin to you? I see. It does. What do you think, Marsden? It may look like him, but I know for a fact Derwent is in Cape Town. Is there anything else you wish me for, Sir Hugh? Uh, no. Uh, Inspector? No, no. Thank you for your help, Marsden. I'd better get back to my desk, then. Huh. What do you make of that? Sir Hugh... When one is hunting wild beasts, one uses beaters who drive the game towards the hunters. Yes, 
I think these photographs will serve the same purpose. <laughs> Who, who's there? Hello, Derwent. Did you get back from Cape Town sooner than you thought? Uh, I did. Uh, matter of fact, I did. And you're just spending time out here during the day, observing the wonders of nature? Uh, actually, And tonight, I... you're here to cool off, because it is so hot in Kimberley. Well, it is. Yes, you, you read my mind. I do read it, with a great deal of interest. You've been back three days. Don't lie to me. You've been seen and photographed. Uh, I, I know what you're thinking, but it isn't so. What am I thinking? You think I've been coming out here to find the diamond. I wouldn't mind if you did. We're partners. How did you make out with the revolver you were going to get from friends in Cape Town? Oh, yes, yes, I got one. Completely untraceable and ammunition for it, everything. I'm glad. I had an idea you might have got back, so this evening I went to your house to welcome you. I found the gun. Loaded. Is this it? Yes, that's it. Phil, what are you doing? I'm pulling back the safety catch. And then I'm going to fire it at you. And then rub away my fingerprints and place the gun in your right hand. But, but, but why? Why? What did I do? I can't trust you anymore, partner. You've left me no alternative. So the partnership is hereby dissolved. <laughs> Inspector, you've won. I hope you appreciate the fact that I came to you of my own volition to confess I stole the diamond and accepted quite willingly being placed in jail. I understand all that, and I appreciate it. I'm trapped. I know it. I'll tell you everything, but it won't do you any good. You'll never find it. It's impossible. Let me tell you how I did it. While I can still... Still... Oh, what's that word? While you can still concentrate. Yes. You want to know how? My assistant, Derwent. I had to train him. Go on. Derwent? Now, we've got just two days, and you've got to practice palming the big diamond... Understand? You work with that piece of stone. Oh, how's this, Phil? Now you see it, now you don't. Yes, keep doing it every spare minute. On Saturday, the managing director will be in the diamond room with us. I hand you the tray. You walk over here with your back to us, palm the big one, put the tray into the safe. I shut the safe. The diamond's in your pocket. Now, the next step, just as we rehearsed it. What do you say? I think the scales are off, Mr. Marsden. I notice the needle vibrating a little. Is that so? Will you clean the scales, Derwent? And then I'll test them. Yes, sir, right away. Okay, so far. The managing director will leave. You take the diamond out of your pocket. Do it now with that piece of stone. That's right. Go to clean the scales and slip the diamond between the scale and the wall. Like? this. Perfect. Then what? On Saturday, when I'm on night duty, I take this balloon and fill it with gas from this pocket cylinder. An hour before daylight, I tie the diamond bag to the balloon and let it fly out the window. A toy balloon. <laughs> Very clever, Marsden. How come we never found the empty gas cylinder? We searched that room from top to bottom, and you and everyone in the place before they left the premises. Durr wanted to put the cylinder where the diamond had been in back of the scales. When the hue and cry died down, I got rid of it. How could you be sure the balloon would drop where you wanted it to? No, oh, I have a scientific mind. I've always had one. I knew there'd be a temperature drop at daybreak, which would contract the gas and bring the balloon down. I know you felt hunted. 
But was there any other reason behind your coming to me? Telling me you wanted to confess? To make you an offer. You let me out. We'll go to look for the diamond together and share the proceeds 50-50. What about Derwin? I'll take care of him. Somebody already has. And they tried to make it look like a suicide, but uh, amateurs make terrible mistakes. No left-handed person fires a gun at himself with his right hand. I'm surprised. He admitted stealing it. In fact, came to me to beg me to stop hunting him. So, after Derwent was shot... What? What? Yes, we found his body out there. A staged suicide. Staged? Murder. My theory is Marsden caught him trying to find the diamond alone. Well, I've turned everything over to the Bureau. If they can build a murder case against Marsden, at least they've got him under lock and key so he can't run away. Do you think that Derwent found the diamond? I doubt it. Marsden tried to make a deal with me. Let him out, we'd go look for the stone together and share the profits. Oh, the nerve. So, no diamond, eh? Oh, when I rolled Derwent over, I found a busted toy balloon. A toy balloon? Why do you suppose a man would take a thing like that with him? Yes, sir, sure, I've done all I could do. Well, I appreciate everything. That... So you're retiring, eh? Yes, Leaving in an hour. Oh, what? Packed already? I was ready to go four months ago. Well, I... I hope you have enough to make it on. Oh, I've saved a little. Uh, goodbye, sir. Inspector, I never thought my flying the helicopter for you would be so personally rewarding. Five hundred pounds is more than I ever got for a charter flight. Uh, Charlie, there comes a time in a man's life when he can see the end of the rainbow. Uh, when do you figure we'll get there? Oh, I say about ten hours flying time. Good, good. You saved me a great many hours of traveling this way, and whatever I paid you, it's well worth it. How did you happen to pick Holland as a country to retire in? Oh, I don't know. It's quiet. It just suits me. Of all the places in the world to end up in, uh, I'd say Holland was the least exciting. Not really. I mean, what has Amsterdam got besides tulips and windmills? Diamond cutters, Charlie. Diamond cutters. Your guess is as good as mine. But my guess is that by the time 505 carats are split up into smaller stones, Inspector Grace will have got for himself a generous annuity. What salves my conscience is that when a man retires from the force, he is no longer an officer of the law. He's just an ordinary man. Or, should I say, an ordinary crook. And perhaps... He, too, will find an inspector at his heels following him. I shall return shortly. For that last word the Mystery Theater allows me, I sometimes place myself in the shoes of one of the story's characters say, Inspector Grace. Without batting an eye, he presents 505 carats to a diamond cutter in Amsterdam. There is payment, and the nest egg hatches into a chunk of money. Would I have the nerve? Could I comfort myself with George Bernard Shaw's opinion, the faults of the thief are the qualities of the financier? I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Our cast included Gordon Gould, Lloyd Batista, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio.